In this Oslo video, I'm going to go through beam footprint analysis, which is a great tool to have in your uh, toolbox for a lot of things. Uh, some things that it's used for or could be uh, vignetting or assessing vignetting, looking at how rays are actually going through a system and hitting different surface, how you're sampling different surfaces with the beams and tolerance analysis, what's the illuminated region for different fields in on an optic on an optic in a system uh, it can also show unusual aperture shapes and beams and you can also get insight for mechanical constraints so it's just a a nice thing to uh, have available so the first thing about this uh, that's sort of a funny thing is the location this is one of the things um, that the location of it seems a little bit odd to me and I'm not quite sure what the full rationale was for putting it here. If we go under optimize and support routines here under vignetting you can see there is the beam footprint and beam footprint outline. So those are the two things that I'm actually going to show. One of them has the command uh, foot PRT and the other has foot pro. Let's just take a quick look at that. So if we go in here footprint PRT uh, here it is the beam footprint analysis that's the command and here's the information for it and then the other one is foot pro foot, foot pro like this okay so we go to that and that uh, only is in the premium and standard editions but I'll just show a little bit about that one and they do similar kinds of things the other thing is if you go to the graphics window and have it on spot diagram these two look like the little footprints uh, some clever person came up with a little footprint icon there how how awesome okay so uh, the next thing I'll do uh, the best way to do this is just to show uh, an example so I'm gonna go here I'm just gonna open our demo triplet uh, the auto draw is on right now I tend to turn that off when I use the program otherwise it keeps popping up uh, it's certainly if you like having it up it's useful but right now when my window is small it's a little difficult so uh, to have open so you can see here I have a couple of surfaces checked that means if surfaces go outside that aperture radius or, or the diameter of the optic then uh, optic uh, then it will actually block the rays so if we uh, look here you can see that on axis the beam is a lot faster than off axis this is being vignetted by the front and the back surface and so you can tell that from the ray fan but we're going to do a little bit uh, more right now with it and sometimes you might want to look at more rays in a system so I can go here under lens to lens drawing conditions you can also do UOC and then DRL is the next part if you want to do the command you can see that I have on axis and off axis rays I'm gonna turn this up to a disgusting 51 rays which means that it's really gonna look much more beam like uh, still not necessarily completely beam like also you can see this goes from 0.4 to uh, minus 0.4 to 0.4 right now and so it's only drawing rays that are 40 percent out uh, in this tangential direction as drawn here in both uh, the minimum and maximum so I'm gonna change that to full and the reason why I want to do that is we want to actually see rays that are going to be getting uh, cut off through the system relative to the on-axis beam, which would be that maximum pupil size. And I'm also going to just draw the aperture stop on because it's nice to have it on for this, for looking at this. So we hit OK. And now I take a look. And I can't quite see everything the way I want, so I'm going to right-click here and change this to a lens scale drawing of 4. And that will allow us to really see the lens. So you can see this beam here is have uh, the uh, off axis, fully off axis beam here. It has a lot of light that's getting cut out. So how would this look going through the system? How would those footprints look? This is what uh, this is nice for us to. This is where these commands are really nice to see. So let's uh, let's take a look at our commands here. So I could go into the graphics window and do it there, but instead I'm actually going to come up here and again show you under support routines, vignetting, uh, beam footprint. So this one will be right at the stop and here's kind of the basic output for it. You can see that for surface 4, which happens to be the aperture stop, if we look here, uh, you can see that there. Uh, this is how the off-axis beam looks because this is the fully off-axis beam FBY was one and you can see that there are some rays that are getting here but some of them are getting chopped off 
later if we were to go back and I'm going to open another graphics window just because it'll be a little bit easier to do that. So I open uh, graphics window with GWO. There's other ways to open that, of course. And you can see here, I got to go back here, do this at four again. And so you can see the beam that's getting through and hitting the uh, stop is up here in this portion of the stop and then later on this back part gets cut off we can easily change the surface we're looking at so for example we can look at two and you can see the same type of thing uh, we can also look at uh, one of the later surfaces like six and you can do other kinds of things too with this certainly uh, so you can look at the beams and how they look on each surface uh, how the rays are getting vignetted that's going to how many there are depends on how many you're sending through of course but uh, there's a percentage too which is a really nice uh, number to have and you can see here the outline uh, of the optic that we're doing with this so it's just a really nice tool to assess these kinds of things the other thing you can do for example let's just turn the checking off right now oops let's uncheck it let's uncheck it and now when we run this you'll see we actually can see the entire beam here it's a little bit cut off at the top uh, we also are only looking at one field point here you can actually change and, and at one wavelength you can change the wavelength you can change the surface number and we can also do something like look on axis which might be nice if I want to make sure how I'm filling the pupil of course in this particular case we're looking at surface six and then this is surface four so that's it's a really nice useful tool to have the other one that I uh, was going to point out is the uh, beam footprint outline and it's pretty similar in functionality uh, you can see the different beams here I'm actually gonna go and recheck these surfaces again these oops these two that were checked so now they're checked again and you can see the same kind of idea but you're just seeing the outline of the beams themselves so if uh, if you have beams that are being vignetted or filling part of a surface the cook triplet uh, the beams are filling a lot of the uh, optic in general but sometimes you'll have something near the image plane and it might just be filling a little bit of it and your beam footprints will be pretty small on those kinds of systems i did want to show one other example so this example is the Hubble Space Telescope that we have and the reason why I've pulled this up is we re I really want to take a look at uh, the apertures themselves on this using these commands as well so let's just do that quickly this time I'm actually going to go to the uh, spot diagram and we're going to do it here so here if we look this is uh, surface number two so this is where uh, the stop is and if we update this we can take a look at that and so the stop here is at this primary uh, mirror if we actually look that's at the primary and you can see it's got the hole in the middle so it's really nice for that we can also move this to surface three and you can see uh, something else so we move it to three and you can see how uh, three is filled the middle of the beam of course has been blocked uh, and uh, we can see the outline of that uh, optic. So you do have to pay attention to, you know, the scales and some other uh, sorts of things on this, but the beam footprint analysis is a nice tool to have in the toolbox.